It's my pleasure to invite uh, Jakub, uh, Jakub Kornbeck from DGR, European Commission on Stage, uh, who will tell us a little bit more about these uh, new political uh, frameworks. Yes, Jakub, welcome. Thank you. This was the appropriate distance. It's great to be here in uh, these mountains. Uh, you will see that I dressed for the occasion, and now I had to check whether actually such yunkas are worn on this side of the border. And what do you do then? I asked one of the organizers, and uh, Sonia asked uh, some of the young people. That's about fact-checking, and that's something I, I will come back to several times in my presentation, fact-checking. Because actually, um, Sonia and I found out that from the young people who live in the region that on this side of the border they don't wear a yunka, but where's the border this way, that way? Just five kilometers away. I would be perfectly at home. Um, but still, it's a lovely place to be. It was a great walk yesterday, not only because of the goat, um, but uh, because of the lake and the clear, pristine water which you can drink. And uh, it's really a good place for reflection. Mountains, yes. So um, this is a time for a launch. Not a book launch, not a ship launch, but an academy launch. And uh, my friend Hayo explained yesterday some of the discussions over the years before that led to this particular format because there were many ideas in the past. And now we're testing and uh, we will see how this works and we'll take stock at the end and uh, then we'll see how we take it forward. Um, Tin also talked about common values. He talked about minimum standards in youth work in Europe. And he talked about the importance of the EU youth strategy. And I would also like to add the importance of our cooperation with the Council of Europe within the youth partnership, because this is one of the most important events of the year. And because this kind of cooperation um, allows us to reach out to countries that are not currently in the European Union, um, because we have a much bigger geographical coverage. So it's a launch. There are different sorts of launches. There are different ways to do a launch, traditional versus modern. You know, you can let the ship go down straight like this. You can let it go on the side. Sometimes when it goes on the side, then there are big waves. And sometimes they wash up on the road next to it, which probably is a bit shocking for the drivers there. There are different ways to do it. Some of them are more controlled than others. You know, some people like doing things in a controlled environment. And others, they just want to go for a big splash, basically. So I would say that there is a youthful versus a middle-aged approach to launches. Probably the most middle-aged one will be the one with the helicopters, um, or the one with the crane, whereas the youthful one, that's probably the one that uh, lands upside down, but uh, it will probably save. And yet, when I use such pictures, youthful versus middle-aged, I am, of course, also guilty of treating youth as a monolith, as if all young people were the same. Yesterday, in Martin's presentation, we heard about some prevailing trends, but we also want to know something about the countervailing trends. I personally, I'm here to learn because I'm not the expert on youth work. I would like to know something about how many percent actually represent the prevailing trend and how many the countervailing trend. And public authorities should be aware of that because many of the lessons from yesterday they were about how trend scouting can be beneficial to corporations when they want basically to generate more income. And they are happy if 10 or 15% are on the trend because that already means income. But public authorities had to devise, some, devise something which is for all of us, for the 15, the 20, the 80, the 90, the 100%. And then we had to get back to the mixed legacy of youth work because youth work has a long and, and diverse history and it's not the same in all countries. And um, I don't know how visible or legible uh, the caption on, on the picture is here, but you will see that down in the bottom left corner, uh, you find uh, things that have fallen off your trolley. In the middle, you find paperwork, probably because the city or the region or the national government or the European Union, they want you to do some paperwork because you've got some money for the youth work. Um, on the right-hand side, you will see some how to do youth work books, and that's actually hard copies. And then you've got all the electronic stuff, and then you've got the games consoles. So it's a mixed bag. It's not just simple. It's not just an app, and that's it. It's a mixture of many different things, and it's also a mixture of online and offline youth work. And that's what we want to explore more. 
But uh, as you just heard before I started, of course, this is about the policy framework. And why is it um, that the youth strategy is relevant to what we're doing now today? Now, the European Union has had a youth strategy for the last 10 years, and it's just embarked on a new one, based on a communication from the Commission and a number of annexes, which are rather big, which you all find online, which are very rich in uh, data about the life of young people in Europe. Uh, member states always think it's a bit um, tedious, I think, when they have to do the national reporting, and they have to send these reports. But then later, I hope that uh, national civil servants can see the added value when they see the report that the Commission draws on, 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 on the basis of that. So that's all the documents which are online. I've not put the EARLs here, you can find them easily, but that's very rich material. And that's the basis for the strategy adopted by the ministers, because the Commission cannot adopt. The Commission can only propose to the ministers. The ministers are legislators when they meet in the Council. And they have adopted this resolution, which is actually the strategy for the years 2019 to 27. Uh, and before the more substantive parts of the text start, there is a reference to our stakeholders. And I've highlighted here the youth workers, because there are so many different stakeholders. We have a vast ecology of stakeholders. But I've highlighted the youth workers here, because the youth workers are mentioned. If you go through the program, you will see many different references to youth work and youth workers. Youth work as a catalyst for empowerment. Youth work can build resilience. Again, when you think about the countervailing trends, as opposed to the prevailing trends we heard about yesterday, the prevailing trends in many cases actually come from the standard setting and the behavioral marketing work of big corporations, transnational corporations, who are not very many, actually. The countervailing trends have to be developed as part of a collaborative effort between youth workers and young people. And youth work has to build resilience in young people. And this is not just something that I'm saying, because this is actually what ministers have adopted. So there's a very important role for youth work to play. And uh, you may also, if you're familiarized with the document, you may also know the three concepts of engage, connect, and empower. They are multifaceted, because when we say connect, we connect not only electronically, we also connect, for example, via our mobility actions that allow people to actually go to another place physically, not just imagine they're there while they watch a picture from there, but actually again engage with people who are there. Engage, empower, empower is very important. So under engage, we find a reference to youth work because of the work of young people, youth organizations, and other organizers of youth work. I like this one, organizers of youth work, because again, that also highlights that youth work is not monolithic. Connect. Invite member states and the Commission to enable access for all young people, as well as for youth workers, to cross-border mobility opportunities. We focus very much on what young people can do when they go to other countries, but a youth worker can also develop their practice and learn new things by going to another country. Empower. Under Empower, you find the most references to youth work. I'm not going to read all of them aloud, um, but there's a reference to the recognition of youth work, that's a very old hat, actually. Uh, and it's not obvious because it's national competence. And the European Union cannot tell member states what to do. However, when we share good practice, perhaps we can, over time, develop a common understanding. The Bologna process started in 1998, actually with the Paris Declaration at, at the Sorbonne. It's taken a long time for us to get where we are now because member states can actually do what they want. And there are even countries in the Bologna process who are not member states of the European Union, but who have joined because it's interesting to be on board. So we hope something similar will happen here. And I'm convinced that the academy is a cornerstone of the architecture of that process, whatever it will look like. Support quality youth work, support youth work activities at all levels, non-formal education activities. Again, more references to youth work. So you will see actually that in this document there is very much youth work. And then, uh, I will not, uh, I cannot conclude my uh, explanations about the strategy without a reference to the youth goals, which come from young people themselves. The product of the uh, structured dialogue, which we now call the EU youth dialogue, because we found out that structured dialogue is not the most sexy name that exists. 
which sounds like something that comes out of Brussels bubble. And we found out that in Ireland it was called Young Voices and in France it was called Provox. Um, and we hope now everybody will actually call it uh, Youth Dialogue. And in the Youth Goals, there is one particular Youth Goal that makes reference to the work of youth work. It's presented a bit differently, but this reference to spaces. When I have groups of visitors, then they don't always know what they should think about these spaces or space policy. Um, two days ago, I had a group of young civil servants from Albania. Very clever, very sharp young people, young professionals on the move, the makers and shakers of tomorrow. But I could see the look in their faces when, when I said space, and they thought that, uh, you know, okay, Europe is a leader in lifting commercial satellites. We lift the most commercial satellites. We're very good at that. But it's nothing to do with that. That's the spaces where you can meet and you are free of pressure. You don't have to prove anything. You can exchange. You can just be yourself. And there are perhaps not too many opportunities in today's world, and that's why it's important to, to provide them. And that comes from the consultation of young people last year, 60,000 across the European Union. Uh, some of this is uh, documented um, by the European Youth Forum, some of it by other organizations that have attended in Sofia at the European Youth Conference. So uh, there is a direct reference to youth work uh, in the youth goals. You have it here under space and participation for all. But you could actually imagine youth work under all of these because youth work can make a contribution uh, moving rural youth forward. Would you do that without youth work? I think not. Mental health and well-being. Well, it's a good question. I don't know how many youth workers will be actively involved, but perhaps they should be. Perhaps if mental health services do not reach out to youth work, maybe youth work should approach mental health services. For us, it was, again, a kind of fact-checking and something new to learn that many young people thought that um, mental health services were not particularly geared to their needs, but rather to middle-aged and senior people. That was completely new, and that's, again, about fact-checking. These are the deliverables from the youth strategy, uh, as they're foreseen over the next few years. Finnish presidency, um, European Commission, um, Croatian presidency, because for each of these, there is one who's in the lead. It's all a collaborative effort, but there is one who's in the lead and who will ensure that we can wrap up and we can present the deliverable to the council. Okay. Council conclusions, education, training of youth workers. Council conclusions on digital youth work online thought and youth work, and so on and so forth. And we have more to come, still under Croatian presidency and then under German presidency, leading to the third European Youth Work Convention in, I believe now it will be Bonn, in December of 2020. I remember at the beginning when we were talking about all sorts of cities and would it be the Schweinfurt process? It will not be the Schweinfurt process, it will be the Bonn process. Although I love Schweinfurt. I had a girlfriend with her once when I was at university. And it's a great name. I mean... Um, Let's face it, it sounds great, Shrine Foot, but it will be Bonn. Bonn is also nice. Um, right, so we have a number of uh, things coming up, but when we have those uh, deliverables to deliver, then we also have achievements to build on. Um, and uh, these resources are online. They are the output of the work of, of recent years, um, initiated within the council when member states' ministers said, hey, let's do something on this. Um, very valuable material, which is all online. Report from the expert group on youth work. Oh, sorry, um, my mistake. It's not the expert group on the expert group. You have many strange expert groups in Brussels, but uh, this actually this is just because I've done copy and paste, eh? And and then and you know th this shows how we have to get back to down to earth sometimes. And uh, sometimes you need actually to print something before you proofread, because if you proofread it on your screen, it looks fine. Huh? Once it's on paper, then you realize, oh my god. Um, <coughs> youth Work Quality Systems and Frameworks, Handbook for Implementation, Taking the Future into Our Hands, Youth Work and Entrepreneurial Learning, Final Report, and the report from the Expert Group on Digital Youth Work. There's a lot to do, but again, let's look at the prevailing and the countervailing trends. Um, and for almost every social phenomenon, there is always one way to read it, and an an opposite way to read it. Hacking, for example. You can see hacking as uh, a cool way of uh, showing your intellect. You can see it as a sort of activism. It's usually legal, and it can also, in many cases, be unethical because you're actually encroaching upon other people's digital rights. And a youth worker who does not alert a young person either to the risks to the victims of hacking or to the risks to the young person themselves if they end up in jail, 
and being in jail is very dangerous when you're young. I don't have to go into any details. It can be very, very dangerous. Um, a young person who is not alerted by youth worker is actually let down by the youth worker. If the youth worker just says, yeah, this is subculture, this is counterculture, go for it, sounds cool. No, uh, youth work must always get back to its traditions, its accumulated wisdom. It will change over time where the hardcore is. But there is a hardcore, and we must not forget about the hardcore, what it is that youth work is about, and take that into the next century. Take on board some of what is new, but also take something from the heart of youth work, uh, the DNA of youth work, if you want. That's what we're going to explore here today. This is a, a, a launch. I don't know whether we will launch the ship um, head, uh, head up or tails up, or whether we'll use a crane, or whether we'll just make a big splash of it. And it's not up to me to decide either. I'll be around, and I'll try to look into or peep into as many uh, discussions as possible. Um, and uh, I want to be inspired. Uh, I'll not be here during the last day when you have the discussion about what the next step should be and how we see the legacy, but I'll be in touch with uh, some of you to learn about that for future use. So thank you very much, and have a great launch. Thank you.